A very warm welcome to you all this morning to the East-West, the Art of Dialogue Symposium. To build bridges of real understanding and not fall in the trap of quick and sharp communication at the speed of light, communication that does communicate but does not make us understand each other better, I have been inspired by 19th century orientalist traveler painters. It took them six to eight weeks. They were not flying American Airlines. It took them time to be on a ship, to carry their canvases, to carry their brushes, to carry their paint. They did not land in Alexandria or in Cairo or in uh, Jerusalem or in Damascus and basically start painting. They had to get to know the society. Many of them did not speak the language. They had to engage. They had to appreciate the values, the traditions, and the culture before they started painting. They did not travel to conquer. They did not have any interest in oil, but they traveled to discover, understand, and communicate, but with understanding. At a time of no photography, no television, no technological communication, perception between East and West at that time was much more positive than it is today. There are works here by Jerome. He owns the Blue Mosque, which is one of the greatest works by Jerome. There are also works by Ludwig Deutsch, who's, who's a superb Austrian artist of the late 19th century. And throughout the collection, you can see that there's a very clever eye at work here. So not only is he identifying the artists that went to the countries, he's also identifying the best quality works that they produced as well. And what Shafiq has done is he's identified those artists like Lewis, who spent 10 years in Cairo. And Dina is a classic who, who converted to Islam and embraced the culture. That is what makes this such an exceptional collection. It's certainly one of the most impressive in private hands, and I think now would be almost impossible to amass. What amazes me is there are 15 different nationalities of artists in this collection which is incredible, really. It gives you an idea of the scope of Orientalism in the 19th century. Every time I look at the painting, there is a dialogue that goes on between me and the painting. Look very carefully at these paintings and just look at the eyes of the people, the expressions on their faces. The women, the way they're dressed, the way they walk around, the salesmen selling carpets in the streets. These were the first newsreels coming from this part of the world to the West. It was the first dialogue between East and West. Art, broadly stated, unites the world. It always has. I really believe, uh, really, arts uh, bring uh, uh, cultures together. And what a perfect timing uh, to do this uh, now is uh, bridging between cultures, bridging between nations, bridging between people, bringing people together. I think art brings the most uh, fundamental human values and uh, that transcends cultural barriers and it helps people feel that fundamentally we're all, we're, we're all the same. How does people to people exchange dialogue, understanding, help to deal with those broader issues? What's your thinking? We may look differently, we may dress differently, our religions may be different, but really at a fundamental human level, we have pretty much the same desires uh, for, for freedom, for opportunity, for peace. It's the governments that get in the way, don't we all agree? There are lots of people in the Arab world who share our, value, our fundamental values, who share our aspirations, uh, who would like to embrace uh, the principles that we've been talking about. Our goal is not to change their leaders, it's to change how their leaders lead. Don't underestimate the power of dramatic positive action by an individual. I do believe that somehow the page has to be turned and a new page has to be opened. Yes, there are differences many, many differences, but as we look at these paintings, for example, the artists are, have an amazing gift of being able to draw out what people may be thinking or doing or perceiving. And so it is with us. I think when we actually get to go see and, 
and walk with people uh, face to face, we can benefit from that. Someone asked me about six, seven months ago, what is, in your opinion, the biggest challenge that uh, you believe exists today? My sense, very simply, is being able to differentiate between fact and fiction. We're living in a very interconnected world, but it's not one that is making us wiser. As a matter of fact, it makes us more susceptible to mistakes. You're gonna only be able to determine the reality when you're there, when you visit, when you get to know people. It's a challenge. Our first exchange program is going to begin in March of next year, where we're going to be bringing young Egyptians to the United States. In June, we're going to take young Americans to Egypt. It's people who make changes. It's people like Sadat, and it's people like Rabin who have made changes. And if some of these young people turn out to be like them, then the whole thing has been worthwhile. Thank you, and we'll reconvene again at 7 o'clock for dinner and uh, a little bit of enjoyment. Thank you very much. There were an incredible amount of ideas that emerged from our conversation today. Ideas, I mean, the essence of it was how do you increase the thread of connection? The most impressive thing from today was Shafiq's ability to articulate what he wants and how important it is to have this dialogue. It's relational. Dialogue is relational. It's something that happens in the context of a relationship. Dialogue as in listening respectfully to other points of view and trying to understand the other side on its own terms. This is the beginning of a journey and I hope quite honestly that my sincere belief that we can create a, a, an initiative inspired by art that can make a difference for the next generation so that the next generation does not talk at each other but talk to each other from east and west.